Support for this episode of Plant Strong is brought to you by Nutramilk, the fastest, easiest, and most economical way to make your own plant-based milk on the planet. You simply throw in your walnuts, almonds, cashews, oats, or whatever milk you're in the mood for, and voila. In addition to making plant-based milks, the Nutramilk can make nut butters, sauces, dips, veggie stocks, spreads, smoothies, you name it. Visit thenutramilk.com and type in the code Plant strong to receive a fifty dollars discount and free shipping on your purchase. Hey, Plant Strong friends, we're picking up right where we left off, and in this second part of the two-part episode with Chad Sarno, we're digging even deeper into practical tips and recipe development that is going to take your cooking to the next level. Grab your pen and paper, and let's go. There's a world of food and opportunity out there that people are not exploring because their own fears, right? So uh, I think going plant-based in general makes people more of a foodie, Mm -hmm. you know? Right. (laughs) Because you're forced to try new things, you know, which is great. You know, I don't know what the question was. Well, we were going back to appliances yep. that, that are kind of, you know, you, you really need. So you, you mentioned the the wok, the cast iron, the uh, a high-speed blender, um, a good knife. cutting board, and then a you were good, talking about the knife. Yeah, a good knife. So, you know, the the key is like the, is, is always, you know, knife safety. You can certainly chop up a bunch of vegetables, um, you know, quickly, but are you doing it correctly? Are you going to cut yourself? You know, all mm-hmm. that. Most people have cuts because of dull knife. So make sure your your tip, just a couple quick tips here. Knife tip is always pointing towards the board. Okay. Whether you're cutting cabbage, a head of kale or dicing a carrot. Okay. A lot of people hold it up as you're cutting like this. Okay. Whereas the tip of the knife, if you slip, you hit the board with the knife before you hit your fingers. Right. Right. Next thing is always keep the tip of your fingertips down. So if you're cutting, your hand's not flat on the board as you're cooking right. because that's basically your, ve- your fingers or vegetables at that point. Right? right. So tip of your fingertips down and your thumb is behind your fingertips. Hmm. So God. a lot of people, a lot of people will do this. And then the first thing I've cut my thumb so many times when I was going through this process, but tip of the knife pointing down. And then, really, you're using your fingertips down. That's it. That's it. And then you right? use, are you using the knife against the And then wrists? once you get comfortable with doing that, then yeah. you're using your, your knuckles as sort of a guide. Right. And you can do that slowly and go slowly, and it'll just slowly start, you know, yeah. speeding up. Yeah. It takes a little bit of time. And the key, we were talking about fears, too, is one thing that stresses people out typically is the prep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the prep is... Once you have everything in place, cooking is so easy. The basic advice that I give anybody that's starting to cook is make sure that you set yourself up with mise en place before every dish. With every, what? It's called mise en place. It's prep. Mise en place oh, okay. literally translates in a kitchen to setting in place. Okay. It's a French term. It's setting in place. And so it's basically, when I talk about mise en place, uh, we call it mise in the kitchen. So it's basically when you're misesing your, your recipe. So you basically will take let's let's just say let's let's go through a typical home of people making dinner okay yeah this is pretty typical you let's say you're making stir fry and rice okay with a sauce all right let's that's all you're making right that's stressful for a lot of people to even think of that because they're stressful because going through this scenario you decide you want to make a stir fry and rice okay so you you start chopping you pull out all these vegetables out of the fridge that you know you want to chop and that you should be eating because it's good for you right so you start chopping the vegetables you know not efficiently right because you're not sure how to use knives you you start chopping the vegetables you turn on the pan all right so you're chopping the vegetables you're chopping the vegetables your pan starts smoking you're like oh shit i gotta get the onions in so then you start chopping the onions okay you're chopping them then you put the onions in you realize that you need to put on the rice so then you've got to go to the cupboard while the onions are cooking they're starting to smoke you go to the cupboard you get the grains you start measuring things out to put in a pan to make the rice right and then you your vegetables are still all over the board while the onions are starting to burn yeah. and then you're like oh man when i add these vegetables i'm going to need a sauce so then you're rummaging through your cabinets to get the sauce and so then your vegetables are finally in your onions are burnt you're stirring it your rice is starting to boil you don't know how to turn it down it's quickly. getting out of hand it's getting out of hand it's getting <laughs> stressful right and so that's the typical like that's the typical mindset of cooking is just you got to like you have to do a little pre-planning in your mm-hmm. mind and when when i i never ever turn on a pan 
unless my 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 prep is done so it's literally it's setting in place so if i'm making a stir fry i will i will turn on the rice first you think of timing so what's going to take the longest to cook okay i'll turn on the rice before i do anything okay so that's going to take 40 minutes 35 minutes that's how much time it's going to be for everything else to happen so that way that way once i finish stir fry rice is done right whereas it's not a second thought you know so rice is on i prep my i'll prep all my broccoli i'll prep all my carrots then i'll prep all my onions i'll prep all my garlic i'll prep all my ginger and you know or cube tofu and so then i'll turn on a pan once everything's on my board ready to go if there's a sauce that goes with it i'll mix it in a little jar i have these little like you know half court mason Mm -hmm. jars Mm -hmm. i mix all my sauce in there so can i can i stop you for a sec Mm -hmm. you mentioned sauces like Mm -hmm. joe inga the bronx firefighter Mm -hmm. He he has created this sauce that he puts on all of his pasta. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a combination of boiled potatoes, onions, carrots, and then he throws it in the Vitamix and he puts in like some garlic, mm-hmm. on, uh, I think, uh, herb spices, mm-hmm. nutritional yeast, mm-hmm. and he puts it on pasta. And his two year old and five year old just can't mm-hmm. get enough of it. Oh, that sounds great! But well, I'd love for you to come back th- to what you're talking about. But sauces are an integral part mm-hmm. of making this oh, yeah. work, Completely. right? Completely. Sauces, Completely. All, sauces, all the, marinades, and dressings. All that. Yeah. I mean, do you have three go to sauces that you recommend to people? So for an Asian one, uh, if I'm making a stir fry, going back to that, for an Asian one, I use I use soy sauce. So I'll use a low sodium soy yeah. sauce. Low sodium soy sauce. I'll use a sweetener. Like okay, what? so maple a syrup? date paste, maple okay. syrup. Okay, I'll put that in. Then I'll use a vinegar. Okay, so you're working with the salt, the sweet, and the acid. Yeah. Okay, fats are not always needed. That's right. the thing. Is right. I'll add cashews to a stir fry just yeah. to you know get, to get that fat in there if I need it. When you say you add cashews, you mean the whole cashews oh, yeah, the right whole into cashews, the dish? The whole cashews. Right? Yeah, I mean whole cashews, whole almonds. I put nuts in my stir fry. Right. I love it. My right. kids love it. You know. Right. Um, but and what, and what, jar, what kind of vinegar are you putting in there? So you can use rice vinegar, yeah. rice vinegar. Also, you can use, if you're using a seasoned vinegar, just make sure that there's, there's some seasoned vinegars that don't have sugar in them. So mm-hmm. you can choose those. Uh, mirin is really good, but mirin t- tends to have sugar in them. Yeah. But uh, a rice vinegar works great. Um, and so you're basically balancing out that salt, that acid, and that um, mm-hmm. sweet. Mm-hmm. Okay. I put it in a jar. You can put some minced garlic, some minced ginger in there. Shake it up. That's ready to go with okay. stir fry. That's right. ready to go on rice or whatever. Okay. So that's one of my favorites okay the other one is um i i for richness i like um i like like a peanut sauce yeah okay so i'll use uh for then you need a blender for this or you can use a jar and you just shake it like crazy but um you do peanut butter uh, or almond butter or cashew butter okay and then same thing working with fat salt acid and sweet so then you build from there so peanut butter almond butter what's my salt going to be uh, um, uh, low sodium tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Right. Not much. You don't yeah. need much at all. Um, What's my sweetener going to be? The sweetener is going to be either maple syrup or dates. And that recipe okay. in particular, dates work really well. Okay. Okay. Just a couple pitted dates. What's my acid going to be? Acid, lime juice, or vinegar, uh-huh. or a combination. Uh-huh. Um, and then you add a little bit of water so it'll blend. You know. And then from there, once you have the fat, the salt, the acid, and the sweet. Okay, that's your sauce. And then you, everything on top of that is aromatics and is different layers. Mm, mm, so a lot mm. of people, if you try a recipe that you make a sauce and it just doesn't cut it and it doesn't work and it, this is something missing, mm. it might be missing one of those components. That's the sort of foundation of building these recipes, right? And then from there, then you can add the aromatics. You can add the ginger, you can add the chili, you can add the herbs, you can add the spices, and those are going to give you another flavor on top of that foundation. So that's two. So you gave me the stir so fry stir and then fry you gave one, me kind of a peanut thai, sauce, peanut, yeah, can peanut you give me a sauce. third. Yeah, third one I would say would be see I like richness. You don't do a ton of, no, of a, nuts and seeds, a, but like a, uh, a like a cream sauce. I love a cream sauce with pasta. So you can do so, yeah. What do you so do? I'll do um, I'll do cauliflower a lot of times. You said Joe uses uh, yeah. uh, potatoes, potatoes, right? Yeah. So I'll do cauliflower. I'll just put it in a little pot and I'll do cauliflower. I'll do a little bit of cashews in it. I'll do um, a whole onion. You chop it all up. You put it in a pot with a little bit of vegetable stock, and then you can add a touch of miso in there. Yeah. Okay. And then you a little, you could add some salt if you want. You you cook that, you boil it until everything's tender. That's reduced the liquid, and then I add that to a blender, and you blend that up, and it's an amazing cream sauce. And, so and it's the you, same what, process. And what would I put that on? Pasta, all sorts of pastas. Right. So I'll make a cauliflower risotto. That's just cauliflower. So that's my sauce. That's my creaminess, and then I'll dice up a bunch of cauliflower, uh-huh. and then I'll mince up a bunch of cauliflower. Like it's crazy. <laughs> right. It's the only ingredient is cauliflower in there, and it'll fool anybody. You yeah. know.
Yeah. Do you have a go-to salad dressing that you would recommend for people? Yes. Um, I like to use uh, the combination of orange juice and a white miso is amazing. Just um, those two ingredients? Those two is really good because you're getting the sweetener. You, the only thing that's missing is the fat. Can you tell me ratios on that if somebody wants to make this after they, they, they Yeah, I mean, you can do, a, It's. I would say it's probably three tablespoons of a white miso, a half cup of orange, orange juice, juice, and then you can build from there, you right. know? So, yeah. um, and that's nice and nice, super sweet uh marinate i mean uh dressing another one is um if i'm doing like a balsamic dressing i'll do uh balsamic and i'll do you can add a little bit of uh sugar uh the sweetener in there being a little bit of maple and yep. you can also add a little bit of uh, yep. of salt being a little bit of low sodium tamari and those three come in at combination is really nice one of the things joe wanted me to ask you was he he, he loves pesto mm-hmm. what is a good no oil pesto how would how would you make that uh no oil pasta i use pine nuts so i'll use a good a good amount of pine nuts or any kind of nut works really right. well um i don't tend to use you can use water to flash it but um just so it'll blend a little bit but plenty of basil plenty of basil i like to use spinach in my basil uh, uh, a little good. bit just to really brighten it up in yeah. terms of color yeah. so i use some maybe half and half even yeah. um some toasted pine nuts okay so if you're going to use any kind of nuts or seeds toast them right toast. it's going to give a little bit more flavor um and then rather than using even garlic just straight raw garlic because pesto tends to be a little sharp with garlic yeah. you can boil a bunch of garlic if you boiled a bunch of garlic in a little bit of water, you boiled it, and you had that on hand, you can basically take that garlic and with the back of a knife, you can squish it on a cutting board. How long do I boil it for? Until it's soft, maybe four minutes, five minutes. Okay. Simmer it just in a little bit of water, and, and that's it. And then throw that in with my... And you can keep that in the fridge. So whenever you're making dressings yeah, or sauces yeah, yeah. or salads or if you're making you know, a grain salad, a bean salad, just slicing up some, some, some cooked garlic is really, really nice. Mm-hmm. So I'll take a little bit of garlic, and I'll smush it um or i'll just put the whole you know blanched garlic in the in the pesto if you need a little bit of liquid you could use you could use a splash of water or a splash of vegetable stock if you're not reaching for oil so joe also he likes eggplant cutlets Mm -hmm. what would you recommend as an egg substitute for like battering if you're making cutlets so so if you're looking at yeah, so I love like an eggplant parmesan, right? So a couple ways to do that. Typically with that, you would do, you would dredge them, right? You would do an egg wash, then you would do, um, then you would do the batter, right? Um, well, the breading, right? So for an egg wash, you could basically use any starch, any like like tapioca starch or corn starch or anything like that. You can whisk that up with a little bit of water. Okay. Okay, that's totally right. fine. You can also use that, that cream sauce that I said. If he's doing that cream sauce of potato, yeah, he can just dilute that just dilute it a little bit okay and be the key is when before you add an egg wash okay you want to also be able to you add it to flour first so there's three stages when it comes to dredging okay so you basically do the the plain is that dredging you said yeah yeah it's just the process of breading okay Uh, so you basically would take like sliced eggplant planks let's say right and then Um, would i want to do that thing like i do with mushrooms to get the water out would that would that help you could but with eggplant parmesan i don't usually do that so i'll i'll take Slice eggplant like planks or whatever. Because I want you to know it. something. Hmm. I can't stand eggplant. You can't. Love do you think it. you could make me like eggplant? Oh, I can make you like <laughs> eggplant. Man. I'm growing a ton of eggplants in my garden right now. I have these little Thai eggplants, the yeah. really small ones, yeah, yeah. which are amazing in curries and stir fries. Um, but egg, eggplant, dredge it in a little bit of flour, coat it, and then you do the wash. And the wash could be. Um, the wash, typically people use eggs, but you could use any kind of like starch water combination, or you can do that diluted sauce, that diluted, uh, cauliflower mm-hmm. sauce, a diluted, uh, potato sauce, yeah. just so it basically coats it a little bit. And then you do the breading. You can do a combination of panko or breadcrumbs and different herbs and nutritional yeast and things like, and spices. And that's what you bread and then you bake it. Right. Mm-hmm. It's great. And then you pour sauce all over it and a homemade cream sauce and you have the best, you know, Parmesan. You know, eggplant parmesan, I'm sure Joe would enjoy that. If you're having a hard time starting or staying the course with a plant strong lifestyle and you really want to master the habits and create a sustainable system around your personal healthy eating, I invite you to check out our Plant Strong Meal Planner. I am really pumped up on this platform. It was specifically designed and engineered to solve one very common hurdle we have heard from each and every one of you. 
How do you make plant-based eating easy, convenient, and delicious? We came up with a solution. We have thousands of plant-strong recipes customized to your personal preferences, integrated grocery delivery to most major metropolitan areas, the ability to create and edit shopping lists, and a team of Engine 2 coaches who are on hand to answer every question from how do you cut a mango in half to how do I begin cooking this way? No matter how silly the question, we are on hand to help. And all of this is available for a buck 90 a week when you sign up for a year. We get emails from people every day saying how this has changed their life and it's made going plant-based so much easier. I hope you'll let us help you and your family fall in love with this way of eating. To learn more, sign up at mealplanner.engine2.com or click on the meal planner on our website, engine2.com. So, Chad, what are three go-to basic meals that you would suggest that everybody learn to master in order to like make this lifestyle work for them? I think it's going to differ with each person and what traditional flavors that you like. But one of my favorite I I love grains. Yep. I love whole grains. So I get this wild rice from, and I'm going to totally plug this company. It's called Moosehead Lake, but they're up in Minnesota. I get my wild rice from them. And I'll, I'll cook a batch of wild rice or I'll cook a batch of quinoa or a batch of brown rice. And then I'll eat that throughout the week, you know? Um, so rather than exact dishes, because I think this is where a lot of people trip up with yeah. making it sustainable, is master a couple techniques. Once you master a couple techniques, then your dishes can vary every day, right? So what are those techniques? So those techniques could be exactly how to cook grains. Know how do you cook a good grain. All of them are going to differ slightly, but there's charts out there with, the, uh, you know, it's two to one, two to one roughly for almost everything. Water to uh, yeah, the grain. Exactly. Yeah. So cook a good grain and not just cooking a grain with no seasoning, put a bay leaf in there, put some sliced garlic in there, put some sliced ginger, put a, um, uh, put a star anise in there, you know, uh, just up the flavor of that grain. How do you cook your grains? Do you do them in a uh, rice cooker or, I just do or just in, in a pot in or a, just in a pot on the stove? In a, in a pot on the stove. Like that. Yep. Wow. So, um, in a pot on the stove, you bring it to a boil. Then you basically um, put it down to a simmer right. until you don't see any water anymore. Right. And then for most of my grains, I then shut off the heat and I don't touch it. For okay, so minutes. let me ask you a couple of things about grains. Uh, I mean, do you have a go-to? Is it the wild rice? Is wild it quinoa? Rice. Is it pearl barley? Wild what is rice. It? Wild rice. Yeah, like like a like a parched, hand harvested wild rice is one of my favorite. You okay. can get those at stores, okay. or you can order it from. Okay. What about online? steel cut oats, oat groats, or uh, old fashioned oats? I like. Uh, old-fashioned oats and just soaking them overnight i do the whole overnight oat thing which right. is kind of nice or i do i've been doing a lot of chia also chia puddings right um because my son loves it. i have a two-year-old two and a half-year-old so. okay so that's so okay that's one technique is yep. mastering the grain mastering the grains. grains yeah the other one is um the other one is on like how to build a dressing we talked about it of yeah taking those four components fat salt acid and sweet yeah okay once you master that and you have a couple under your belt with knowing that how to how that works and how those components work then it can apply to so many categories so if you're looking at a dressing we talked about just going real quick back to it we we're talking about that peanut dressing right that peanut sauce if you look at each one of those categories let's say fat category you can swap out if you don't like peanuts you don't like almonds use cashews use tahini you can swap that out yeah if you don't like lime you don't have access to lemon or citrus you can use you could use orange or you could use any kind of vinegar if you don't like Do you sweet, ever use grapefruit or is that just too i like i use yeah. grapefruit i use grapefruit uh some grapefruit has a little bit of bitterness in it yeah but the thing with uh orange and orange and grapefruit those could cover two categories so mm. those could cover acid and sweet mm. so you get the same thing with olives olives are fat and salt mm -hmm. you know that's why that white miso dressing works because yeah. it's white miso is salt and sweet you know orange juice is sweet and acidic so mm. that's why that works with those, mm. just those two ingredients mm. Mm. so you can swap out ingredients within each category to make the recipe your own so when i have some go-to's my just in terms of recipes I'll make rice salad almost at least a couple times a week, like a rice avocado salad. Oh, I love it. So Just what do you like have in there? So, so I'll do like wild, wild rice, wild rice, and and you could do it warm or whatever. But yeah. I'll make a batch of grain just to have it. So then I'll put it in the fridge, and then I'll bust it out, and I'll make, I'll dice up some peppers, I'll dice up some 
a little bit of onions i'll put some avocado in there squeeze a lemon some toasted seeds stir wow. it up and it's wow. freaking delicious right. just right. that you so know? you just so once you have the grain you just build That's depending it. upon you your build. preferences yeah exactly okay and so you, we got the grain we got the the dressing the dressing yeah. what else and for a salad i i've been making it for 20 25 probably 25 years kale avocado salad is my go-to recipe that i always make for my family and do you and do you drive the avocado into the kale yep yep so you're using again you're using that fat acid salt so i'm doing sliced kale i'm doing avocado i'm doing a little bit of acid lemon and i'm using a little bit uh of like uh, diced bell pepper or cherry tomatoes as that sweet and a little bit of salt to it then you're massaging it you're basically making a guacamole with kale in it yeah and then from there you can add grains to it you can add beans to it you can add toasted seeds to it you can add other vegetables to it my and it's one of those like my little two-year-old started eating it recently and i'm like yes i was so excited you know and it's it it hits all those taste profiles so it's hard not to like you Mm -hmm. know and anyways i love those are my three sort of go-to i'll always stick with a dressing or a marinade i'll always work with grain salads again that can Mm -hmm. incorporate beans or not and then a kale avocado salad what's your what's your favorite go-to potato my go-to i like a red russet I like a red russet, so because they roast. And what I'll do is wow, I never so, would have guessed that. So I like sweet potatoes yeah. too, but like the small red russets yeah. is really really. What about Yukon Gold? So Yukon Golds are good I, if I'm using. I the find only, they're really buttery in. They they are, but they're drier than the others. So if I'm making like a gnocchi, yeah. you want to look for a dry potato. Okay. So I use Yukon Golds only for gnocchi most of the time. Uh-huh. Um, but with a russet, like this really small um, little popper potatoes, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, what I'll do is the best way to roast a potato, and I'll, I do roast potatoes a lot, is if you get those small potatoes, I always boil them first, okay? You don't boil them in, the wa- in boiling water. You add, you add the potatoes to the pot, then turn it on, mm. okay? Mm. That way it cooks all the way through. Mm. And mm. so I'll boil them just so you can stick a fork in them, not till they're fully done, but just parched, basically, uh-huh. um, poached. Um, and so I'll take it out, I'll boil them for maybe five minutes, strain them cool them and then i'll have that in the fridge so if i want to do roasted potatoes you put it on a super high heat you slice them put them on parchment paper it crisps on the outside you can put them on a really high heat and it cook and it's already cooked already right do you have a favorite a favorite potato for like doing um potato wedges or french fries on parchment paper yeah sweet potatoes or a russet Mm. I like I like uh, I mean Japanese sweet potatoes are kind of a treat. I like to mix those into different russets. Right. The, the only thing is like I'll keep them on separate sides of the tray because they cook differently, you know. So and then I'll mix them for the kids, you know. So I'm gonna ask you two questions. So first, you're having a carnivore over for dinner. You want to win them over mm-hmm. to like you know to the mm-hmm. good side. Mm-hmm. Uh, any particular meal that you're gonna make for them? Man- homemade manicotti. <laughs> 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 or pasta a pasta dish yeah um yeah well tell me about the manicotti manicotti, Manic- uses, manicotti. uses some fat there but i would yeah. do for using any kind of pasta well we're, we're working with a carnivore here so yeah, i want so you to I'll, pull out all the stops all right so if i'm making a fresh pasta i love making fresh pasta it's a label of love, labor of love so making fresh pasta a lot of people typically reach for eggs basically eggs are used for functionality of pasta so i mimic that with plants right so the functionality of an egg is uh, it's using the fat and the protein, giving it enough and a ratio to make that pasta pliable, right? So I'll, instead, I'll do silken tofu and a little bit of uh, vegan butter or a little bit of oil, right? Yeah. And you make that egg just like you, you know, that's yeah. the egg. And then you mix that in the pasta and you knead it and all that. There's all sorts of uh, recipes out there. Um, in our Wicked Healthy book, we go into that recipe. You make your own pasta. Make my own pasta. But, or dumplings. Dumplings is a good one, too. So you can put anything in a dumpling, okay? So basically, you can buy dumpling skins from uh, your local Asia market or specialty store. Uh, You can make your own if you wish. Um, But, like, um, one of my favorites right now, it's been all summer still, is uh, is our corn dumpling from our, our Wicked Healthy Cookbook, which is basically a combination of fresh blanched corn, um, or you can use frozen and then corn powder. And I use corn powder from using freeze dried corn. Mm. So you can get the crunchy freeze dried corn. You blend that up into a powder. You get this, and, and so you mix that with the corn puree. And it's like this corn, incredible burst of corn flavor, you know, these dumplings. So so corn dumplings and a coconut broth, that's also a good go to. So. Okay, second question. Or mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> you and your buddy Woody Harrelson, right? Yep. You're going to Station 72 in the Bronx. <clears throat> You're going to hang with Joe and his buddies there. Yep. So what's Woody's favorite meal that you'd cook for him and the, and the firefighters? 
I mean, he loved his pastas. He loved, uh, you know, the stuffed mushrooms. I remember, um, you know, I haven't cooked for him in many years. We're just, yeah. you know, we've remained friends, but, um, I would, I would say that, um, something with a lot, a lot of flavor, flavor forward, um, you know, even the Thai route of using yeah. a lot of aromatics and spice and things like that. That's a good way to someone who's like used to the comfort of, you know, that they think that meat brings them, um, in bold flavors, mm-hmm. you know, approaching a, a menu with a ton of bold flavors and Thai and Vietnamese does us so well with mm-hmm. like all the different herbs and the chilies and the, the combination of the sweetness and the richness and the acid and, you know, and all of those hit all the buttons with flavor mm-hmm. interest, you mm-hmm. know, and so it wakes up anybody's palate, you mm-hmm. know, so mm-hmm. something that was definitely a bold flavor, I would serve. You've been doing this 30 odd years. I mean, maybe you can't tell me, maybe you can, but who's the most famous person that you've ever cooked for? Because I heard, so famous, I, I, depending on I heard from a little birdie, somebody that you, you cooked for at, at their house not too long ago. Oh, yeah. And that, to yeah, me, that is like... That was pretty amazing. That yeah. was pretty amazing. Yeah, Arnold. Uh-huh. Arnold Schwarzenegger was pretty, it was pretty cool. I was pretty starstruck by him. And, you know, I've worked with a lot of celebrities in the past of cooking, and, and a lot of them on film sets with Woody. What did, what did you make for Arnold? I was working with this chef to help them adopt more plant-based techniques within his menu so right. i ended up coming in so it was kind of like a kitchen nightmare situation but it turned <laughs> out really well so I, I flew into la on a sunday my training was supposed to be monday fly in at like let's say two or three in the afternoon i talked to the chef as soon as i landed and i was supposed to be doing a training with him and then dinner for arnold or something on monday something like that i didn't know the details but i flew in and he's now the chef has become a really close friend of mine but um so he didn't have a big attitude he was he's so awesome yeah do you Alexander. find that most good chefs don't have an attitude most good chefs don't have an attitude right. the chefs that are just like hiding behind ego are the yeah. ones that have the attitude that right. their shit don't stink right. and they can't eat plants because it's not cool right. that's whatever, right. <laughs> whatever. Right. as far as i'm concerned those chefs are lazy and they're chasing after the train right now you know at this point um all right the train has left the station yeah, completely they're chasing man <laughs> uh, but you know i so dinner was, uh, so I call him when I land and I'm, you know, figuring out how I was going to shop that day and come over the next day. And he's like, you know what? Arnold's not going to be here on Monday, so we can still do a training, but can you do dinner tonight? He's having 10 of his friends over. Um, and so this is at like two, I'm landing at getting my bags and I'm like, sure, I'll sure. <laughs> he's like, well, it's cause it's a great time. And it was golden globes that night. Oh wow. And so I'm like, he's like, he's having a couple of his friends, closest friends over. So I can't miss up missed this opportunity Sylvester Stallone. so it was like a total blitz to like go shopping and and what he wanted to learn was uh what the chef wanted to learn was all the alternatives on the market so a lot showcase mm. all my favorite products on the market and then work with as simple as you know how to mimic dairy and meat that was main focus and yeah. so i used some products in the market but i did that mushroom technique with a number of things and um and then also made fr- showed him fresh pasta and and then also non dairy all the non dairy category but also made some homemade milk and cream sauce and things like that and show it was a, so we we ended up serving so it and we ended up pulling it off it was ten people and um, they had I think did it was they, did, twelve things on the menu that did, we did you come out off. before each thing and explain what it yeah, was yeah, and all that yeah, yeah it was fun it was it was a lot of fun and that was. That was one of those times where, uh, you know, meeting Arnold was, I mean, he's like a real life superhero, you know, like he's, you know, him and Sylvester Stallone and, and, you know, all the back in the day when we grew up, like there were superheroes, man, in our eyes, you know? So I've met a lot of celebrities, but I was just kind of starstruck when I saw him. (laughs) The other one is when I was on uh, set with Woody years ago was Lauren Bacall. Uh, Lauren Bacall was married to Humphrey Bogart back in the day. And like Lauren Bacall is a legend and she was such a difficult woman i'm sure to work with but she loved my shepherd's pie <laughs> like a shepherd's pie for woody and he would bring it to her and oh, know, it was just amazing. shepherd's pie sounds like so, so absolutely amazing oh it sounds great right now <laughs> oh, it does i would <laughs> love it oh, right I would now love it shepherd's pie so you cook all the time you go home do you have the wherewithal to like cook your meals at home or is your wife doing that i love cooking i just love cooking cooking's not and cooking is my passion it's just like someone who's into fitness or someone i mean they just love it all the time you know it's not a chore does your wife like to cook no not that's why i think she married me (laughs) (laughs) no but she uh 
I love to cook. I even if she wanted to cook, I'd say no. Let me let me do this. Let me because I love it. I love being able to feed my family. I think it's an opportunity and it's a true blessing to yeah. be able to understand the food that I put in my my, my children's bodies. Yeah. You know, and yeah. know every what step a, of it. What an amazing s- skill to have too, and and it seems like a skill that the vast majority of Americans they don't do, have. Don't you know. don't don't understand. Yeah. Don't have a passion for. Um, it's about confidence though you know if you're as soon as you're confident in the kitchen then you're sitting in the driver's seat of your own health that's mm -hmm. what i feel you know as soon as you take control of your health uh in the kitchen it reflects everything else in your life i like that what about so uh how many kids you have two two kids are they plant-based they are yes i have a little vegan boy and my 13 year old daughter is is plant-based at home well she's plant-based all the time but she eats some dairy when she's out and about with her right, friends right. at events or whatever but she only eats vegan at home right. um it's all i've ever cooked it's all we have in the house so nobody has a choice if you're going to come over and you're going to yeah. eat nothing else is getting yeah. cooked in my pans that's for sure yeah well like you i've i've got kids i've got three kids and they've been you know plant strong since mm-hmm. since birth yeah and they amazing. love it they that's absolutely amazing. love it yeah and they're certainly not deficient they're vibrant beautiful children and oh, uh, oh. you see these and they're a ball of energy almost too much energy at times you know so <laughs> I, I hear you there so you and you and i have seen this movement explode yeah. <clears throat> over the last decade i mean to to a level that is just kind of like it makes my head spin a little bit completely in a, in a great way completely. right so from your vantage point, what are some of the most exciting things going on in your world right now? And, and where do you see, and this is a big question, but where do you see the plant-based movement going over the next five, 10 years? Oh my gosh. That's a, someone asked me that too the other day. I would say the most exciting thing that I have going on right now is we're, we're creating. And I, I say that we, my brother and I, and it's, we are instruments of 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 all the people that have influenced along the way you know and all the knowledge so i don't want to take credit for Mm -hmm. what we're doing uh but we're in the center of this incredible movement right now from a culinary standpoint and from a retailer standpoint so of like what manufacturers are out there creating wiki kitchen we just rounded the corner and sold our 10 millionth meal the other day we've been on market for uh a year and a half that's 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 like insanity. A year and a half, and we've sold ten million plant-based meals with Wicked Kitchen. So that basically and this, is, this is only over in the, <coughs> over this is in only the in the UK. UK. So we have an exclusive line with Tesco called Wicked Kitchen. Derek is over in UK leading that. He's the head of plant-based innovation for Tesco, but Tesco also licensed our brand Wicked Kitchen, which is a kind of a substory of Wicked Healthy, um, and it's basically ready-to-eat meals, um, wraps, sandwiches, pizzas rice bowls noodle bowls salads um you name it little pots of food protein pots things like that we have some desserts that are coming out we have 40 products on market in tesco um we launched at 20 and within a year they doubled the line which is incredible and so we have some very exciting line extensions coming out in the next three months as well um and we're in you know over a thousand stores 40 products and We've hit 10 million mark uh, a couple weeks ago, which are 10 million people. That's 10 million meals that do not contain animal products. That gives me the chills, you know, just being a part of something like that. And so that's just the UK side of things with Wicked Healthy. Good Catch Foods, which we we created here, which is a solution to... um, to really helping our oceans, you know, and making people recognize that there are alternative proteins out there that you don't have to reach for fish. You so can this still is sustainable have, seafood, right? It's, it's the most sustainable <laughs> seafood on the planet because it's made out of beans. Yeah. <laughs> you know, beans, um, not <coughs> mushrooms. Is it beans? It's all of good catch. So we're not using beans. any of the lobster mushrooms no. or anything like that. No, it's really? a, it is a it's a slightly processed product, of course, but yeah. it's. Uh, it's the environmental piece and the environmental impact that it has is outweighs that uh, personally. So, <clears throat> well, I, I had some samples at the Expo uh, West trade yeah, show when yeah, I saw you. Yeah. I mean, the, the flavor profiles that you're creating. The texture. And, te- I mean, it's just like, uh, yeah. it's. I'd, I'd say that it's the equivalent in seafood to what Beyond Meat has done yeah, with, yeah, their, yeah. You know, with their burgers. It, it's an exciting time. So we, we are... Uh, we have three products in market right now. Uh, we should be in about 3,000 doors by the end of this year, within a couple months. Uh, we launched with Whole Foods. We have three shelf-stable tuna-free products, which are, it's a six legume blend. Um, and then we use seaweeds and algae and DHA oil. So nutritionally, it holds up almost identical to an albacore tuna, mm. and it's shelf-stable. So there's no other plant proteins that 
you can grab off the shelf and kind of travel with throw in your gym bag or travel you know um so i'm going camping tomorrow like for the week and i have a bunch of good catch you know <laughs> because i can so just, you know it's, it's, i can just put it on a salad i can put it on a pasta bowl yeah. whatever it's amazing you say it's shelf stable what, how, how's it packaged is it in it's, in, it's in a it's in a um uh, a tear open bag yeah, so yeah. it lives right next to the tuna in the tuna aisle um, so that flexitarian shopper yeah. has that option to diversify their protein if rather than reaching for fish, they get a, a legume based one. So we're launching that. We're in a series B right now. We have an amazing raise happening. We have amazing excitement behind it. And, uh, the, that like what excites me the most is the impact and disruption that this product is going to have. And I think that would, that's what also drives us. We're activists at heart and, disruption of a category is what we're all about mm -hmm. it's about time that we're in a we're in a position with and we're in a point with plant-based innovation right now that what we create has the opportunity to dis disrupt a category that has been around harming america's health and the world's health and the ocean's health and the land health that's uh for many 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 years and we uh that's the goal is disrupting the factory fishing industry and we're certainly going to do it we're oh. set out to do that oh. so i don't have any doubt you know so uh what, what about the movement where do you see us going in the next uh, <coughs> five ten years oh man i mean just the, just looking at just the 18 the past 18 months even i mean before it was like oh five years things have grown 10 years things are looking at the exponential growth of the plant-based category within and i'm not talking like the medical side and and the health side and the fitness side that's not even my world right and that's mm -hmm. blowing up mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it's all on these parallel paths of like i don't think people are going to stop eating meat i think people are 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 voting with their dollar you know i mean the consumer well, like, demand right now for plant-based options from everything from fast food to retailers to high-end restaurants it's it's no longer going to be this like fringe diet and it is not now you know i mean more and more restaurants are taken on but you can go to i'm shocked at a restaurant if it doesn't have a vegan uh, yeah. option you know and and it's it's uh i see there being just options out there you know, in mm -hmm. in every category in every f food service sector right and every you know whether you're on an airplane whether you're in you know at a at a stadium at a game like i see vegan options alamo everywhere. draft house movie everywhere. theater yeah, everywhere so it's hard to say where it's going to be in five years because it's grown yeah. so much beyond our capacity to understand yeah in the i was 18 months i just read yesterday in the uk uh kfc yeah, has introduced this imposter burger yeah and, and they it, sold out in four days they sold out yeah that's crazy tesco tesco is getting rid of their meat and seafood counters because they're and they're going to some packaged foods in those departments but they're seeing such a demand for plant-based that they're the whole shift of retailers are shifting around you know wow. of what they're selling and the planogram of the store and you know i was just in heb uh which is a local grocery store as you know it's just in heb and they had a and it said meat section above it and it was all vegan meats in the frozen department all vegan meats and the, the conventional i was blown i was like what the heck yeah. Yeah. i mean it's it's mind-boggling how quickly mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. are happening mm -hmm. especially is when there when there is plant-based options not saying they're the healthiest options these processed products but they are they're turning the public on to what's possible and that you don't have to rely on animal suffering for mm -hmm. our for our appetite right mm -hmm. but when you see these fast food middle america that are on every corner of middle America serving, you know, the, the Burger Kings, you know, uh, impossible is rolling out in 7,000 Burger Kings across the United States in September. Mm. It's a plant-based burger, mm. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, I mean, when, when that tipping point happens, like it, like we don't even know how to project what's going to happen in six months with this movement. It is so incredibly exciting from a business standpoint, yeah. from a innovation standpoint, from a health standpoint, you know, um, from a fitness standpoint, from all of it, it is such an exciting time that it's so hard to say yeah. when that tipping point happens, what's going to, yeah. what the next step's going to be. And then another, and just another thing to add to the whole, you know, momentum is we got the game changers coming out, yeah. you know, in, oh in, in, a, in a couple gonna months. Hard. I was going to hit so hard. We're very excited about that. Yep. It's going to be the most, I, I would say, the most well, influential film to it, hit. it will be the most watched documentary on the face of the planet. Yeah, hands down. To this without point. Without a doubt. This has been this has been fantastic. Thank you, the, brother, your, for having your, me. your 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 breadth of knowledge on this subject is nothing short of 
Im- impressive and i want to thank you for everything you've shared with the audience uh, i think there's a lot of great value thank you that you imparted you. and uh, i know i'll be seeing you around because uh, we run in the same circles so we do we do peace Let's get together more often engine two keep it plan strong thank you so much brother thank you i want to thank my co-creator of the podcast scott battisill and 10 percent media Lori kordowich producer extraordinaire, and the Engine 2 director of events, Bumble Media for this podcast production, and Brandon Curtis for everything in between. Thanks to Whole Foods Market for believing in me and giving me a platform for the last 10 years. Special thanks to Joe Inga, our Bronx firefighter, for your courage to not only change your life, but also allowing us to share your story along the way. And lastly, I want to thank my father and mother, Dr. Cobble B. Esselstyn Jr. and Diane Cryle Esselstyn, as well as all the Plant Strong pioneers who have been pushing this boulder uphill for more than three decades. As they say, we are standing on the shoulders of giants. And remember, if you're digging the show, please rate us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. And with that, let me say... Peace, Engine 2, keep it planned strong.